Hi, everybody. Hi. It is time, time for a few ponderings from the Purple Parlor. It's Wednesday, uh, just after, I guess, maybe my clock says just afternoon. And um, I just realized, well, I'll do it later. I, I have been having this issue where I'm giving us a minute for it to gather. Let me just share. share. You know, I have um, meetings and connections with friends and family all over the country and in different time zones. And I continually get it backwards that I think if it's 12 here, it's one there and I mean, I just, I get really turned around these days. I can't seem to keep the time zone straight. And so that's gotten me into some trouble. And I was just today, um, I was thinking that something, there was a uh, uh, an event happening at one o'clock central time. And I was thinking, oh, that's at the time I'm doing my Facebook live. I'm going to need to think about how to incorporate. <laughs> I just realized one o'clock central time is two o'clock here. <laughs> I just can't keep it all straight. I feel like my mind is shuffled. I don't know if anybody else is struggling with any of that. Anyway, hello. Um, hello. It is 12 noon in Washington, D.C., and this is the Purple Parlor in my house here in the city. And my name is Ginger Gaines Sorelli. I'm the senior pastor at Foundry United Methodist Church. And whatever time it is, it's always a good time to hang out and uh, check in. I've um, been busy this week with um, participating in the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference uh, Board of Ordained Ministry full member examination. And that is ongoing. I'll be transitioning back into that work uh, right after this time. And so I've been thinking a lot about um, call and particularly theology, because that's the section that I am uh, examining, uh, the topic that I'm, I'm helping people think about. And I've just, I've had a whole lot of things on my mind. But I have to say, uh, the thing that I decided was really for, at the forefront across everything that's going on is that I feel once again that um, I sense that there is a, a yet another wall that people have been hitting in the last few weeks. And I, I don't think I mentioned it here I may have, but there there was a an article that came out late last year, I think maybe in December, in the Harvard Business Review, who does that that has some really helpful articles and insight around uh, leadership and communal life and dynamics, that sort of stuff. And it was talking about how this next wave of living in and being in the um, in the pandemic was going to be more difficult even than last year because for a number of reasons, but partly because, you know, there's this sense that, well, we've got the vaccine and people are getting vaccinated and, um, and let's face it, we're all just really sick and tired of all of the restrictions and the isolation and all of the ways that our lives have been so uh, curtailed, limited and um, at risk over these last months. We're sick of it and ready to move on. Um, and so there's this sense of tension and frustration and exhaustion. Um, you know, we've got folks who have been, um, you know, the things we've talked about for months now, parents who have been school teachers. And if, if they're blessed enough to continue to have jobs, they're working their jobs, they're taking care of their kids, they're um, they're the daycare, the school, the school classroom, um, the teacher, and the parent, the worker, the spouse, all of those things, the partner, all 
at the same time all the time. And that's just one scenario. You've got folks taking care of vulnerable family members and friends and, you know, just all of the things that we've been managing and we're tired and we want to move on. And, you know, and as people are getting the vaccine, we're, I'm hearing a lot of conversations that go, oh, I've got my va vaccine or I'm, I'm getting ready to get my second shot. And, um, and now I can go anywhere. And people are saying, well, but you can't go anywhere. You know, you can still be a carrier and, and you can, there's this, this tension that I hear in all the conversations. And uh, in the midst of that, being a pastor of a congregation and kind of always trying to care for the dynamics and the needs of our, of our faith community, I'm mindful that this anxiety and frustration and exhaustion and just <laughs> deep desire to be in a different a different mode of being able to live with more freedom and to move about the cabin as i say or move out of the cabin <laughs> as the case may be um, all of that begins to affect how we are generally how we are with ourselves and how we are with other people and I've, I've noted over many years in pastoral ministry that there are times when, um, I think we're getting a package. I think it was someone making a delivery. I don't know. We're okay. Anyway, um, but I've noted that over the years when there is, um, you know, when things are stressful and people are anxious about things, that you know, behavior, you start to see it in people's behavior. Um, people either check out or act out. <laughs> um, just to, you know, to sort of paint it with a broad brush. Um, and, and that's natural and normal. I mean, you think about, you know, as human beings, when our reserves are low, we can't, um, it's harder to be patient. It's harder to, um, to hang in there with stuff that just makes us frustrated or that that we find difficult in any way and i'm thinking about that because i i just i read an article yesterday that was particularly focused on or maybe this morning <laughs> there we are with the time thing again um but it was about mothers this sort of research that had been done on mothers just generally and then some research that had been done to follow up during the pandemic and just how how responsible and guilty mothers were feel, feeling about how they were with their children i mean and this was a specific study so and i was just looking at it um you know and that all the insecurities that they felt all the time have just been amplified in the midst of covid and um somehow they feel responsible for all the things that, that their children are experiencing. It's just, you know, and so I think about that's sort of normal and, and no matter what our role is, what we're doing, I think in the midst of this moment, all of that just feels like more. And, um, and so we can't extend, the thing I was thinking about is like, we don't extend, we don't extend much compassion or gentleness to ourselves. It's like, oh my God, it's my fault. Why can't I figure this out? Why do I keep thinking that it's three o'clock when it in in Oklahoma when it's you know four or whatever? Um, like, what? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Why can't I sleep? Why can't I get my work done the way I normally do? Why do I feel so um, droopy? What what about what am I not doing? It's this sort of constant self critique, and, and not extending grace or being very gentle. On the other hand, that can also then get turned hmm, outward. <laughs> so uh, my patience is like this deep right now. Like it, the fuse is pretty short. My, the general um, fuse, I think is a little short right now. So these are the things I'm thinking about. And I'm, I'm thinking about the fact that um, that what we're really the invitation. It's pretty, it's pretty simple today. What I, what I want to encourage us to to be thinking about together is 
How are you doing with extending grace and gentleness to yourself? And how are you doing with extending grace, and compassion, and gentleness to other people? Um, I would say in any given moment, I'm kind of all over the map. <laughs> um, but, you know, our spiritual tradition reminds us that uh, we need help to do this. Our, our reserves will run out, but God's reserves are everlasting and always flowing and always available for us. There's a line in John chapter 1, verse 16, that just reminds us that um, from, from Christ's fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. From Christ's fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. And I think about, there's this, there, I love the language of that fullness grace upon grace there's this sense of sort of a flowing overflowing which is just available it sort of connects up with the image that i've been lifting up for the last year of the wellspring that sort of just constant flow of god's loving presence god's grace and mercy what is grace grace is god's unmerited ever-present love and care for us God's presence with us uh, to help us, to give us life, to support and guide and um, uh, encourage us. And so that grace we receive, can receive, and then um, we can ask God to help us uh, to, to hold our own self um, Self, you know, when we start to beat ourselves up, to, to, to release that, to let that go, it doesn't, it doesn't serve anything. It's not helpful. And, you know, to say, help me do the best I can and to be gracious with myself and gentle with myself. And I, my sense is the more we can do that, the more we're able to then extend that to other people. Um, or some, some of us may be really good at extending that to other people, but really crummy at doing it for ourselves now that I think about it. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's one of those, I think, daily, you know, re-ups, like help me again today, God, to be, to receive your grace. And so that I can be grace in the world. I can let that grace flow in and through my life to other people. I feel like right now it's the thing, I feel like it's the thing that we all need a lot of. And it's going to be a tough, a tough um, few months, I think, around all of this because we really do have to be mindful uh, not to rush things because we could upend the, the, the good trajectory that we're on uh, in terms of COVID-19. And so, you know, we, it's I'm so, I mean, I literally had a dream last night that we were back at Foundry in worship, that we weren't in the sanctuary. We were in some really weird place. And I was wearing the most bizarre stuff. Like, I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but the point is, is like, I mean, I'm, you know, there's like a lot in there that's like, oh, please, can we just be back together? Can we do, you know, be together um, in some of the spaces that are that are meaningful. So I think we're all longing for that. But we simply have to be safe. We have to continue um, to do what we've been doing and not upend um, the commitment that we've made and that's kept us relatively um, safe and secure for for this last uh, year. So I just want to encourage us to be as patient as we can to to ask God to help us to extend grace to ourselves and to one another, to our families, um, and you know, to be mindful that if someone else is acting out or checking out, um, it may just be that they've hit a wall or they're having a moment. And what can we do to to try to to breathe and and extend a little grace in that direction? Um,
It is not easy. I'm not never going to say that. Um, but I do think that that it's part of our call as those who want to try to reflect the love of God, the grace of God that has been lavished upon us, the fullness of Christ, grace upon grace. So that's, that's what I got today. Um, I hope that you are going to experience, if you're in DC, it is beautiful. So I hope you'll get out and take a deep breath and soak up some sun. If you're in other places where it's not so nice, snuggle up, take care, be safe wherever you are. And I hope that you will, um, will join us for worship and for the various things we got going on as we move through this Lenten season. Let's pray. Loving God, for the beautiful gift of this day, for the gift of your grace, your grace that flows um, ever present, ever abundant, ever amazing, to strengthen, encourage, and guide us. Help us to be gracious with ourselves, gracious with others, to extend your love and mercy and compassion um, to the places that uh, and the persons that need it most. I pray all of this, trusting that you will guide us and get us through this next stretch of the journey. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God be with you, dwell in your hearts, and may you know in the very core of your being the liberating power of God's love for you. See you next time.